Greetings. This edition of Indiana History in Places will tell you about the podcast cover, at least when I began the podcast on Monday, July the 20th, 2020, Indiana's Constitution Elm. The Constitution Elm. During the summer of 1816, 43 delegates gathered to write the first Indiana Constitution in Corydon, Indiana. The weather was hot and sultry. The delegates gathered under a massive elm tree to draft the Constitution in its cool shade. The tree outlisted that Constitution, which the state replaced with a new one in 1851. The tree died of Dutch elm disease in 1925. Workers removed the little limbs and coated the tree trunk with tar to preserve it. It now resides in a protected shelter a short distance from the first state house. Small pieces of this elm tree are still for sale in the gift shop. Near the Constitution Elm, visitors to Corydon will find this historical marker near Indiana's first state capitol building. Title of her, first state capitol. Location, State Road 62.3 miles east of State Road 135 intersection between Dale and Willier Avenues, West Corydon, Harrison County, Indiana. Installed by the Corydon Chamber of Commerce. Marker ID 31.1962. Point two. Marker text. Corydon became the first state capital of Indiana in 1816. The Constitution was drawn up and the first session of the state legislature and Supreme Court convened here. When the United States Congress created the Indiana Territory in 1800, they placed a territorial capital at Vincennes, then the approximate center of population on the huge expanse of land. By 1813, proponents for statehood, anticipating that Indiana would soon become a state, passed an ordinance that moved the territorial capital to Corydon, which was closer to the population center of the proposed new state. Corydon. Early in the 19th century, named Edward Smith migrated into the Corydon area at a spot in a valley at a spring next to the current fairgrounds. Territorial Governor William Henry Harrison traveled through the area and stopped at Smith's cabin to rest. Harrison purchased a plot of land at the junction of Big and Little Indian Creeks. Local lore says he planned to establish a town there and asked there and asked Miss Daughter to name it. She suggested a name from Harrison's favorite hymn, the Pastoral Elegy. The first stanza of the hymn goes like this: "What sorrowful sounds do I hear? Move slowly in the gale. How solemn they fall on my ear, and softly they pass through the veil. Sweet Cory notes are all o'er. Now lonely he sleeps in the clay. His cheeks bloom with roses no more since." Death called his spirit away. He used the name. He later sold this property to Harvey Heth, who was a surveyor. Heth planted Corydon in 1808. Harvey Heth, 1770 through 1816. Heth was a native of Virginia who moved into the Indiana Territory in the late 1700s. He served a short time in the territorial legislature and surveyed most of Harrison County. While in the legislature, he served on the commission that picked the new capital at Corydon. He donated some of his land for the town's use. He also signed his friend, Squire Boone's tomb. Moved from Vincennes. Dennis Pennington, Speaker of the Territorial Legislature, started building the building that would eventually house the Territorial and State Capitol building in 1811. The legislature also considered Madison and Jeffersonville for the capital. However, they eventually settled on Corydon because of its central location. On November the 3rd, 1813, the Indiana Territorial Legislature passed a bill that authorized the move to Corydon. It served that role until 1816 when Indiana became a state. It then served as the state's capital until the legislature moved it to the more centrally located Indianapolis in 1825. These stories are part of the author's book series, Hoosier History Chronicles, which includes the books A Year in Indiana History Stories, books 1 and 2, by Paul R. Wanning. Readers can find these books on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, and other online retailers, both in softbound and ebook copies. They can also be ordered directly from my website, www.mossyfeetbooks.com. You can contact me at mossyfeetbooks.com at gmail.com. Thank you for listening.